going to show images of Cadacil. Cadacil is a monogenic small vessel disease and it was the first gene discovered in patients with stroke and in patients with depression in the 90s. If you know what the acronym Cadacil stands for, you know many key features of this disease. It's autosomal dominant with a mutation in the NUTCH3 on chromosome 19. And the NUTCH family are transmembrane proteins taking care of the communication between cells. NUTCH3 is, among others, expressed in vascular smooth muscle cells, leading to the arteriopathy, to the subcortical infarcts and the lichen cephalopathy. There is mainly cerebral involvement in Cadacil, although NUTCH is expressed in all tissues, and that is because there is not only a problem with the vascular smooth muscle cells, but also a problem with the blood-brain barrier and the pericytes that also express NOTCH3. And we are going to come back to the pericytes later. On imaging, in Cadacil you can see hyperintensity in the external capsule in over 95% of patients with Cadacil and involvement of the anterior temporal pole in over 90% of patients with Cadacil. And this anterior temporal pole involvement is very specific for Cadacil. This is an example of a woman in her 30s who has had migraines since she was a teenager. And the anterior temporal pole involvement together with white matter lesions that are more than would be expected for her age. This is a picture very suggestive of Cadacil and the diagnosis was confirmed with a skin biopsy. Patients in the sixth decade are 100% symptomatic and you can see the extensive white matter involvement with lacunes and atrophy. When we look at the smooth muscle cell involvement and the arteriopathy, there's accumulation of NUTCH3 in the media, leading to hyperplasia of the intima and the formation of fibrous tissue surrounding the vessel. So it resembles a little bit the histology of amyloid angiopathy, where there's deposits of amyloid in the muscle wall of the vessels. You can see the vessel wall involvement on imaging, these are seven Tesla images, pre and post contrast T1, with enhancement of the vessel wall of the leptomeningeal arteries and the pile arteries of the subcortical arteries and even involvement of the veins. As said, there's also a problem with the blood brain barrier. And when you go from the larger vessels to the smaller vessels, the muscle wall disappears and there's only a layer of endothelium in the capillaries. And there's pericytes surrounding the endothelial layer and these pericytes also express NUTCH3. The pericytes are located under the vascular basal lamina, just like the smooth muscle cells. You can see on this microscopic image where the vascular basal lamina has been stained green that there are blebs. And then there is this staining with red for the pericytes and you can see these cells with some distance from each other located uh, among others at junctions of the capillaries. And these pericytes form the blood-brain barrier together with the astrocytes. And if there's a problem with the pericytes, also expressing NUTCH3, there's a problem with the blood-brain barrier. And this leads to the entrance of large molecules in the brain and neuronal damage and activation of the microglial cells. So this explains the white matter abnormalities in Cadacil. And the anterior temporal lobe involvement is especially interesting because the pericytes have recently also been linked to epilepsy. So that's something to keep an eye on. I use it as a mnemonic that there is something special with the pericytes in the anterior temporal lobe, which explains the uh, predilection for the anterior temporal lobes in 
catacyl and also plays a role in the pathogenesis of epilepsy. And the pure white matter lesions in catacyl are caused by the problems with the blood-brain barrier and the pericytes. And besides that, you can also see enlarged perivascular spaces in catacyl and lacunes, as is nicely summarized on this histological specimen. Because of the microangiopathy, you might expect microbleeds, and indeed one-third of patients with catacyl do have microbleeds, mainly in the thalamus. If you have uh, elderly patients with microbleeds in the thalamus and basal ganglia and extensive white matter abnormalities, on top of your differential diagnosis for catacyl is the chronic hypertensive encephalopathy, and we're going to talk about that next time.